Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing gastric acid secretion. Okay, so we're currently in the process of discussing the structure of the stomach wall. Okay, so, um, we've just discussed the epithelial cells. Okay, now, to make the epithelium complete, what we need to add in is the basement membrane. So all of these epithelial cells will be attached to a basement membrane that is underneath them, okay? And this basement membrane is made up of protein, okay? So it's mainly made up of collagen, but uh, other components of it include laminins and also fibrillin, okay? And it basically supports the epithelial cells, because remember, epithelial cells are, um, they're just a goo, basically, and what keeps them attached, what keeps them in the correct place is that they are attached to this protein meshwork, basically, which is the basement membrane. Okay, so this is the basement membrane here. Now, uh, what we need to discuss is that there are some special cells that are in amongst the epithelial cells in these gastric pits and gastric glands in particular. Okay, so we're going to discuss some of these special cells now. So, right at the base of these gastric glands down here, you have a special type of cell known as a G cell. Okay, so I'll highlight these in orange. So these orange cells right down here, these are meant to represent G cells. And G cells stands for gastrin cells. Okay, so these are cells which will release gastrin. Okay, and we'll see the purpose of gastrin later on. Okay, so they are right at the base of these gastric glands. Okay, a little bit higher up the um, gastric glands, but still very close to the bottom. Okay, so let's show these ones in pink. You have a type of cell known as a chief cell or a peptic cell. So, these pink ones are going to represent the chief cells or the peptic cells. So I'll put chief forward slash peptic cells. Okay, and these cells secrete uh, the precursors to active protease enzymes. Okay, uh, so they secrete what are known as zymogens, which mean uh, precursors, inactive precursors to enzymes. Okay, and the two that they secrete are pepsinogen, which is uh, the precursor to the protease enzyme uh, pepsin, which is a very important uh, protease, i.e. it breaks down proteins. Okay, and also in infant humans, they also secrete pro-renin. Now, people generally hear about renin and think about something that cows have in their stomachs and not instantly of something that humans also have in their stomachs. But infant humans also do have renin in their stomach and it is because these chief cells or peptic cells are secreting the precursor to renin which is pro-renin and that then gets activated to renin and renin again is another protease which breaks down proteins. Right, so chief slash peptic cells secrete pepsinogen, which will be converted into pepsin, and in the infant, uh, they also secrete proranin, which will be converted into renin, uh, which will uh, then act as a protease within the stomach. And do not, please do not confuse this renin with the uh, renin, uh, or often sometimes called renin, that's in the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. That is spelt with a single N in the middle here, rather than double N. So don't confuse those, they are not the same thing. They are very, very different. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, then let's talk about the next important cell of these uh, gastric glands. So this is going to now be the parietal cell, which are really the stars of the show. So I'll show these in blue here. Okay, so in blue, these are the parietal cells. Okay. So at the top there we have the parietal cells, okay? And these are very close to the uh, point where the gastric glands become the gastric pit, okay? So they're near the neck of the gastric glands. And basically these parietal cells will firstly secrete the hydrochloric acid, so they are responsible for secreting the uh, acid which is within the stomach. Okay, so they are responsible for the very low pH of the uh, stomach lumen. 
uh, they also secrete something called intrinsic factor, uh, which is important in the correct absorption of uh, vitamin B12, which is also called cabalamin. Okay, but we're not going to say anything more about that in this video. Uh, right, so uh, now let's um, try to take the structure of the stomach further. Uh, so we've looked at this outer layer of the stomach wall, but the stomach wall doesn't end with that. So I'm going to try and squash what's left underneath here, basically. So, basically, underneath all of this portion here, you have something called muscularis mucosae. Okay, and this is a thin layer of smooth muscle cells. So I'll draw these here. So there are many smooth muscle cells in this layer. And this layer is called muscularis mucosae. Okay, so let me write its name here. So this is muscularis mucosae. Right, and since it's a layer of smooth muscle cells, I'm going to color this in in red. Okay, so in red here, this is the boundaries of muscularis mucosae. Now, the gap between uh, the bottom of the basement membrane and uh, the muscularis mucosae, that is full of connective tissue, basically. So let me color, in fact, not in blue, I'll color this in in yellow. So, uh, all of this space here that I'm now highlighting in, in yellow, uh, this will be full of connective tissue. Okay, and this space which is full of connective tissue, this is called the lamina propria. Okay, so you have the epithelial cells sitting on a basement membrane. Underneath that, you have this large layer of connective tissue which is called the lamina propria. Okay, so lamina means layer, propria means uh, thick. Okay, so this is the lamina propria. Okay, and uh, basically you then have, underneath the lamina propria, you then have the muscularis mucosae, okay? Um, and basically all of this together, the epithelial cells with the basement membrane, with the lamina propria, with the muscularis mucosae, all of that together is called the mucosa of the stomach lining. Okay, so this is the mucosa okay, of the stomach wall. Now, underneath the muscularis mucosae, then, what you have is another layer of connective tissue, okay, and I need to make sure that my arrow goes to the actual muscularis mucosae, and this other layer of connective tissue is called the submucosa, okay, so it's underneath the mucosa. Right, now the submucosa will contain arterioles and venules. Let me try and show these here, although everything's getting a little squashed. Okay, so here's an arteriole, here's a venule, and basically uh, the arterioles will send off smaller branches which will pass through the muscularis mucosae and go and supply uh, the um, cells of the, um, s s the gastric epithelium with blood. Okay, and then you'll have smaller little venules which will take the blood from uh, the cells of the gastric epithelium back to the venules within the submucosa. Okay, and then underneath the submucosa you now have three layers of smooth muscle cells. Okay, so let me show these now. So, the most, the one that's closest to the lumen over here, so this one here, the first one, is known as the oblique layer of smooth muscle cells. Okay, and this really is getting silly now. Oblique layer of smooth muscle cells. The next layer down is known as the circular layer of smooth muscle cells. Okay, and then finally, the outermost layer of smooth muscle cells is the longitudinal layer of smooth muscle cells. Okay, so let me explain uh, the orientation of the smooth muscle cells in the oblique the circular and the longitudinal layers. Okay, and for this we need a big picture of the stomach back again. So I'll draw one out up here. Okay, so if we draw our stomach here, okay, like so, then basically uh, the oblique smooth muscle cells are oriented in a direction like this. So all of the oblique smooth muscle cells um, 
over the entire surface of the stomach uh, will be um, oriented in this sort of direction. Okay, the circular ones will be oriented in this sort of direction. They will be oriented in the direction that allows them to circle round uh, the um, stomach, basically. Okay, and the longitudinal ones will be oriented in this direction. Okay, so that they're basically in different orientations. These three different layers of smooth muscle cells uh, will be in different orientations on the stomach. Okay, so, depending on where we take this cross-section from, so for instance, if we take it from here, so if we're looking at this, then what we should see is the oblique ones, they'll be sort of going in this sort of a direction, won't they? Uh, so, we should sort of see them half in our cross-section and half not, because they should be coming out as an oblique angle like that. Okay, so they'll sort of half-heartedly be in our picture, like so. Okay, now let's think about the circular ones. Well, the circular ones, if we're taking this cross-section here, okay, the circular ones will be going into the page, okay, around the stomach, and therefore we will only see the small cross-section of them, so we'll only see a circle like so. Okay, so these are the circular smooth muscle cells. And then uh, the ones which are going longitudinally, they'll be going in this sort of direction, Okay, so we will see them completely in our plane, so we'll see their full length, okay, like so, within our plane, okay? Right, so those are the three layers of smooth muscle cells that you have surrounding the submucosa layer. And then finally, the outermost layer is a single layer of cells, and this is the serosa, okay, uh, which is just the peritoneal covering of the stomach. Okay, so here we have the serosa. Right, so we therefore have four layers of the stomach wall. We have the mucosa, which is this layer responsible for the secretion of gastric acid, and also other things such as the uh, zymogens to the protease enzymes and the intrinsic factor. Okay, and then we have the muscular, well, the muscularis mucosa is part of the mucosa. Then we have the submucosa, which has the supporting blood vessels for the mucosa. Then we have the muscle layer, which has these three different layers of smooth muscle cells, which all have different orientations. And then outside of that, we then have the serosa, uh, which is this uh, single layer of cells, uh, which is the peritoneal covering of the uh, uh, stomach. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video and continue our discussion in the next video.